Welcome back, my wizards. Adobe's getting sick and tired of all this talk about, oh, nuke is the industry standard for compositing, blah, blah, blah. Adobe's like, we are the goats. We're not having this. $15 billion of revenue. So Adobe has been strategically releasing new features that's giving Nuke a run for its money. This is so interesting. Let me try to explain what these features are. Now on my website, you can download a cheat sheet comparing After Effects features and Nuke features, see the pros and cons of both. So the first feature that Nuke has that After Effects didn't is being able to reuse the same mat for multiple elements in your scene. We use this dust wave stock footage and we wanna put it behind the talent. So what we had to do is duplicate the talent mat and then do alpha inverted. So now it's behind the talent there. But you can see this is getting really messy. We had to keep duplicating this talent mat every time we wanna use it. Now that's where Nuke has a serious advantage. Pull the mask input out of the merge node and plug it into the character there over here invert just like that so you can see we have multiple nodes accessing the same mat we don't have to keep duplicating the mat now it was a few years ago for this very reason i gave a feature request to adobe about the track map and in this new version they came out with a feature that was exactly what i requested which was having a pick whip on the track mat so we can pick whip any mat so now what we can do is just pick whip this mat down here we click this invert button just like that. So now we can move this mat anywhere and it's referencing the same mat multiple places. This layer can pick whip it. This layer can pick whip it. Just probably like how you're trying to pick whip Selena Gomez. That's what I'm gonna start saying in the nuke pipeline. I'm gonna be like, pick whip it. And they're gonna be like, what are you talking about? Good job, Adobe. That is a solid feature, really catches up with nuke. By the way, you can download this dust wave element on my website. It's pretty cool because it has real shadow detail like the black and white. So all you have to do is grab the tint effect and choose colors from your scene. It'll make the shadows and highlights match your scene. So it's definitely better than a lot of other uh, stock footage out there. Cool guys don't look at explosions. They blow things up and then walk away. Now this one is definitely one of my favorites where you can see the render time for each node to see what's slowing you down. So in Nuke, what you can do is go over to a script editor and type in Nuke dot start performance timers and you don't have to look at these milliseconds here you can just zoom out and you can see that the red nodes take longer to render and the green nodes render faster and after effects came out with a feature that actually works even a little bit better over here on the bottom left you see this little snail click this boom now that's even more visually intuitive you can see what layers or even effects are slowing down your comp so you can speed up your RAM preview and renders. Excellent work, Adobe. So here's another special feature in new. Let's say we wanna grade this smoke. So here, I don't know, just increase the brightness. But let's say we wanna apply this same grade adjustment to this smoke element. So Nuke has this a feature where we can hit Alt-K and clone the node. You can see they're connected. So whatever we do to one grade node, it's gonna automatically do to the other. So we apply this to the other smoke element. Now you can see it's going to affect both smoke elements at the same time. Which is what scientists call the quantum entanglement. Now in After Effects, what are we supposed to do? We increase the brightness on this one, but okay, then we can copy this brightness to the other layer, but then we change the brightness on this one. It's not updating, so what do we do? We add an expression, and then, you know, we can open this here and try to link the expression. But then, oh, let's say we want to change the contrast here. It's just really complex but adobe also saw this feature in nuke and they created their own solution so what you can do is go up here and do edit copy with property links then we paste this here boom you can see it's red now it's linked so when we change the brightness of one it changes the brightness of the other one good job adobe pretty smart but obviously unlike nuke we can't see that it's visually linked we just have to remember that th there's two effects in here that's a common problem with adobe is that you just have to remember stuff is happening but in Nuke, you can visually see that things are happening. The more you ignore it, the cooler you look. Now, the third way we have here that After Effects was lacking compared to Nuke is you couldn't control the order of operations. So when you reuse an effect multiple times, After Effects couldn't detect that certain effects were there because things were... All right, that's confusing. Let's just jump in. Let me show you. So to explain this, I have this car explosion shot, and let's say we just have the final render, but then we have these mats here where we're gonna make adjustments. This is very common, a lot of my students, they don't have the original project files for their portfolio shots, and so they think they're stuck, they can't improve those shots, but you can just take the final render and make improvements. Let's say we're gonna decrease the contrast of this car explosion in the background. So we can create an adjustment layer and just bring up the blacks like that, and then pick whip the car. Only problem is it's, 
existing where the foreground talent is. So I'm gonna go to this car mat here and let's get this car mat to crop out where the foreground talent is. So we can do that with a set matte effect and let's say we choose a talent almost right. Let's invert this, bam. So that's working, but let's say we have a little bit of a problem here that the edge isn't quite matching. We need to choke in this edge. So let's go to our talent mat over here and let's choke this in. A simple choker, we just choke this in. The problem is when we go back to our layer here, it's not updating. No matter how much we choke it in, it's not affecting this set mat because this set mat effect doesn't know that this simple choker even exists. This set mat effect is sampling the talent mat layer before these effects are even applied. So it doesn't even know that the simple choker effect exists. Now obviously in Nuke, we wouldn't have a problem with this. You know, if we apply an erode effect to our foreground talent mask, obviously we're not gonna have those calculation problems it's gonna choke that mask like we expected to. There's never any layer sampling problems because it's all one graph. In After Effects, you know, we're having a problem with this set mat doesn't know that the choker effect exists. But Adobe came up with another solution. So they have this new drop down where it says effects and mask. So now it's gonna see those choking effects. We turn this off. And when we change the choker, it updates on that set matte effect. Adobe knows these features in Nuke and they're trying to create these features to keep up. Now, I have to admit, I have been wasting your time because even though Adobe created workaround for these few missing features, Nuke still has many, 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 many other advantages. It's so much easier in Nuke to like copy this from one comp to another then After Effects, there's all these pre-comps. Nobody talks about this, but the biggest advantage of Nuke is not the software features. It's how it opens up career opportunities. I have a video talking about that in the description. So if you've had fun and want to stick around, you can subscribe to the newsletter. And until next time, Wizard, crush, destroy, annihilate! DJ Abrams! Visionary Fire.